Hi, I'm Mark from the Microtasker project. In this box, I've got an NXP IMX RT1020. Board. And now we're going to see what it's all about. So here it is. This is a Cortex M7 processor, which runs up to 300 megahertz. Now what surprised me about this chip is the way that its GPIOs are organized. Now I'm assuming that a lot of people are going to be changing in the near future from Kinetis process to these types. So I wanted to look today at the GPIOs, how to get your heads around them. Now if you're like me and have quite a lot of experience with the Kinetis parts, you'll be used to finding a table like this in the user manual or the data sheet. Here you'll see the pin um, organized according to its GPIO function. Here we have port B bit 4 which can have various other functions like analog or Ethernet or timer and we can see this very easily in the Microtask project when we build for for example the Freedom K64 board. Here I've configured a very simple project with a blinking LED and a hello world and this is what it looks like when we simulate it. Here we can see the blinking LED on the board and the uh, associated GPIO output. If you look in the bottom left hand corner here, you can see the function of the pin when I hover my mouse over it. This is the output, which is on PTE26. We see the other peripheral functions that it can have, but we see at the moment that it is programmed as an output and it's toggling between 1 and 0. If I look at these ports here, I can see that they are configured as UART0. We're going to come back to these a little bit later. So what I'd like to show you is the code which configures the outputs to be used when we do this simple blinking test. Here we can see the Kinetis code to do it. It's based on the Microtasker port macros. So we have an, in an initialization function which configures and drives the output on port E, the green LED is port E bit 26. It's configured as an output. It starts off with a value 1. And these are its characteristics. That means that it's set up as a slow slew rate output with a high drive current. The code which we use for blinking the LED, that means toggling it, is this one here where we use the macro toggle port on port E and again the green LED and the result is as we've seen here before. What I want to do now is I want to run exactly the same project on an IMX RT device. So what I can do in the Microtasker project is to select a different target here at the IMX and if I rebuild it then it will also run as we saw before. So here I have the project built for the IMX device and again we have a flashing green LED on the board and this is the output that corresponds to it. So let's take a quick look at this. First of all we're going to have a look at the data sheet and we're going to attempt to find the same pin multiplex diagram. Now in the user's manual this is the closest you're going to get to it. It's a list of things called pads. Now some of the pads can be GPIOs, but the pads of course can also be other functions like here the flex SPI. Here we have the alternate function which corresponds more or less to that which we are familiar with from the Kinetis world. And moving back to our simulation, there's another thing which we notice. Here the ports are not called port A, B, C and D, but instead they're called ports one, two, three, up to five. Note here that they start by counting from port number one and not from zero. That is the same for things like the UART, where the very first UART in the device is UART one and not UART zero as in the Kinetis parts. Switching back to the user's manual, if you look in a lot more detail, you will find registers like these. Quite a long name, but what they do is they, they allow you 
to mux the pins between these alternate functions. And if you look in the middle here, you will find the GPIO function. And you do, in fact, find this quite obscure list of the functions or the peripherals that this pin could be set to. However, it's not actually a pin, it's a pad. So the first thing we realize is that the GPIOs or the pin multiplexing in this case on the IMX device are not GPIO orientated as they are on the Kinetis, but pad oriented. Now in the simulator to make this a little bit easier to understand, if you hover your mouse over the ports and you look in the bottom left hand corner, although we are looking at them GPIO oriented, which I believe is the best way for the programmer to see them, it will also give you their pad function. The pad function is just about here. So you see that this one here, the control of the muxing of the GPIO 1 bit 0 is controlled in the GPIO AD B0 pad set. I'm going to move my mouse along and then we can see the, um, the pads changing. And what you'll notice is that we can go along a group of GPIOs on the same GPIO port and the pads actually move from one group. For example, here we're on the group EMC pad. It'll then suddenly jump to an SD pad, B0, and then also jump onto an SD B1 pad, which means that the control of these ports actually do jump around quite a lot in the control in the memory map. So I asked NXP about this and they said, just go and use the pin configuration tool. Well, what I did instead was I made a little Excel sheet. And this is the Excel sheet that I made. And I made it in the way that I understand it as a programmer's point of view, where I like to see the GPIOs grouped together with their alternate functions. And then at the end here, so that we know which pad we're talking about. Here you can see also the equivalent pad, which is used for the actual pin control, which we're going to see in a couple of seconds. So if, if I now move back to the code, and we look at a comparison between the Kinetis version of this running project and the IMX version. What we can see is that the IMX version can use the exact same port macros. Now the only difference is that we don't say it's on port E as we did in the Kinetis. We just have to change it to the port number on the IMX device. So here we have port 1, bit 5. But the rest of the macros or the usage of the macros stays the same. We can also use the same characteristics. Here we have a slow slew rate and here we have a high drive signal. So rather than needing to do a complicated new setup using uh, pin configuration tools, I can just take my original Kinetis code and adapt it very, very slightly to the ports that I'm using. And then I already have a complete operating project. There is a note of interest here. What I said is that when we use the uh, characteristics of the output in this case, we can use exact same characteristics as we used on our Kinetis part. We do in fact, on the IMX, have more functionality. There are a set of characteristics which maintain compatibility with the Kinetis, but if we want to, we can also benefit from an, an increased set of um, characteristics. For example, we can give ports hysteresis or no hysteresis and rather than just having high drive uh, strength or low drive strength we have quite a lot of intermediate drive strengths here as well. So just before terminating I'm going to take a quick look again at the UARTs. Now here we find the two UARTs which are being used in the IMX version. Here we are using the low power UART 1 and in the simulation we have this connected to a virtual COM port so we just have some simple messages each time I type in something. Now the point of interest is how do we configure these pins to use the peripheral functions? To look at this, we're going to look at the UART driver. 
Now a second interesting point here is that the UARTs or the low power UARTs in the IMX are so similar to the ones used in the Kinetis parts that we can in fact completely share the driver. So here I'm using the exact same Kinetis UART driver for this project and this operation but we're going to look at the pin configuration which it performs. So here I've identified the code which is responsible for setting up the pin. I have Kinetis code and IMX code side by side. So again we can do this simple comparison. In the Kinetis case we would use the config peripheral macro and we would say that we would like the LP UART0 TX functionality on the port C bit 24. Comparing this with the method used with the IMX we see that we can use the exact same config peripheral macro and we can then define that we want it to be a, a low power UART 1 TX function but rather than specifying the GPIO in this case we have to simply specify the pad instead. Cross referencing to our spreadsheet we can see that this function is then on the pad GPIO AD B006 which is exactly what we specified here. We note however that most of the peripheral configuration takes place in the drivers which means that the normal user wouldn't even notice this slight difference. So what we've just seen is in fact that the users of the Microtasker project today working on their Kinetis devices don't really have to get their head around anything all they do is say which ports they want their pins on and then their projects will run on the IMX. Many thanks for watching this video and good luck with your own projects switching between Kinetis IMX using Microtasker.